It is being reported on January 27th, 2018, that former murder convict Amanda Knox receives up to $10,000 per speaking engagement about the events surrounding the murder of Meredith Kircher. Knox has spoken at various businesses, high schools, colleges, and conferences in the U.S. and Canada. Most recently, she spoke to students at Renault College in Salem, Virginia. In her carefully crafted speech, Knox claims to be helping those who have been wrongly convicted while pocketing ten five to ten thousand dollars per show. Meredith Kircher was a 21-year-old student who was tortured and stabbed to death on November 1, 2007 in Perugia, Italy. Many believe Knox was directly involved and she was found guilty twice for the murder before a controversial acquittal in 2015. Over the past decade since the crime, Knox has helped to script a music video, published a memoir, given countless interviews, written blogs, spoken at various events, and starred in a self-named movie on Netflix. In 2017, shortly before the 10th anniversary of Meredith's death, Knox announced in People magazine that she plans to return to Perugia to shoot a reality show. Currently, Knox is hosting a Vice video series funded by social media giant Facebook. All of Knox's endeavors center around the Meredith Kircher murder case. The lawyer for the Kircher family, Francesco Maresca, spoke out about the news of Amanda's latest paid performances. Quote, I hope you understand how inappropriate this behavior is and how the family of Meredith Kircher can be affected, said lawyer Francesco Maresca, legal representative for the family of Meredith Kircher. Speaking in Italian media, he called what Amanda was doing bad taste. And he further said, quote, Amanda Knox never ceases to surprise us. I keep thinking, he added, that she should thank the Italian justice system for declaring her acquitted despite two previous heavy convictions. Instead, she engages in offensive commercial initiatives, exploiting the memory of poor Meredith. Certainly, concludes the lawyer, Tacky. He continued on, Amanda Knox should think about her life without continuing to talk about this sad affair from which she is the only one to profit in terms of both fame and money. On February 3rd, 2018, Amanda Knox appeared on Irish television. Amanda Knox appeared live on Irish TV on Saturday night on the Ray Darcy show. Before she came on, a clip was shown from the Netflix film Amanda Knox, wherein she states ominously, I'm either a psychopath in sheep's clothing or I am you. Knox 30 came on the show about 1050. She was wearing a full length dress of pale blue fabric print with a faint white pattern on it and a high neck. Her shoes were stacked, laced up beige, open toe boot style sandals. Her hair had been curled and set to tumble down her shoulders and back. She had on thick foundation and makeup with pale blusher. Her facial expression on her opening introduction was a stricken one. <clears throat> she had a raised forehead with frow lines, often associated with anxiety. She pointed out that Meredith was one year older than her and that she was the, quote, little sister of the cottage. Several times her voice became tremulous. Darcy asked her why she had, oh, excuse me, Darcy asked her how she had met co-defendant Raphael Selechito. Knox went into a delighted girly mode, bubbling about falling in love and his buying her perfume as he, as he would an Italian woman. These lines and flirtatious demeanor were identical to that of the Netflix film. Knox became fog giggly and asked Darcy, have you ever had an experience like that where you just fall in love? Darcy looked at Knox rapidly. His interview contained plenty of hard questions. Knox characteristically answered the tougher ones by taking a gulp and looking downwards. 
Darcy seemed to hit a raw nerve when he asked her why she told police Patrick Lumumba had murdered and raped Meredith. Knox became more and more emotional as she launched into her oft-repeated script of how she had been questioned for hours and hours, hit and screamed at. She claimed that she named him because the police suggested it to her. However, in her original court testimony, she confirmed that she was the one who brought up Patrick's name first. Knox's main message was that the media misrepresented her with their use of photo of the pair kissing outside the cottage immediately after the body was found. She claimed that she knew Meredith was dead when Philomena shouted, a foot. The press and the prosecution did what they do to all women, claimed Knox, by dwelling on her sexuality and being abusive about her. At this, Knox's face screwed up with imaginary contempt. However, at the time of the trial, she told Prosecutor Menini and the courts that she didn't know the dead person was Meredith until the police told her at the Questora. Knox has visited regularly, oh, excuse me, Knox was visited regularly by a representative from the U.S. Embassy who reported no ill treatment at the time. In court during her testimony, she confirmed that she had been treated well. Knox told Darcy that doctors told her that she was infected with HIV. She said a prison officer kept visiting her and asking her for sex. She claimed that she was forced to write a list of every man she had ever slept with, which she jotted down in her prison diary, prison journal. She claims the police then confiscated her prison diary and the prosecutor released the content to the press. What her prison diary says in her own hands is that the prison doctor informed her that it was probably a false positive result and not to worry. There is evidence that it was the defense who released the diary to the press, as they allegedly did the confidential autopsy pictures to an Italian TV station. Knox said she had lots of letters from Irish people when she was in prison who understood her treatment by authorities, and some had sent her Irish rebel music. Knox sang a few lines of the wolf tones, come out you black and tans, come out and fight me like a man. Darcy remarked, that's the oddest thing I have ever heard. It is a pro IRA song with black and tans referring to a division of the British army. Knox told the audience, she is now concentrating on journalism and innocence projects. She said she was unusual and that she was wrongly convicted in the USA where black and deprived, where that most wrongly convicted in the USA were black and deprived. She told Darcy they see her as a little girl.